Good afternoon everybody. Um, this is the bread recipe and method video that I've promised you. So I've messed around and played around with this recipe about 10 times over the last few months and finally I've perfected it. It makes the most incredible tasting bread. No oil, no salt, very little fat, um, almost none. So you can eat as much of it as you like and not feel guilty. The ingredients, I will put them in the description box and obviously transcribe the instructions as well below. Basically you use four cups, four measured cups of flour. This bread is what I call my half and half bread. So it's two cups of brown flour or wholemeal flour and two cups of white. There's also two teaspoons of yeast, um, fast action yeast two teaspoons of brown sugar um, and that's about it that's the ingredients that's them just give them a good mix to start off with make sure they're all lovely mixed together sorry about this I'm, I'm having to hold my camera and do it with one hand so it's not going to be 100 percent steady so I apologize for that then you want to make a little well in the middle and you add one and a half cups of warm water doesn't have to be hot, just a little bit more than warm. And in you go, give that a really good stir until you make a really nice dough. It'll probably be a little bit sticky, but I've found that this exact amount of water and flour works pretty much perfectly. So once you've mixed up the, the, uh, the flour and the water, you just want to you just want to knead it for a little bit. Sorry, excuse me again. I'm just gonna have to. You just want to knead it for just maybe 30 seconds, just to make sure everything's all mixed together. And you want to end up with a nice looking ball of dough. You want to make sure that all the flour's been picked up. There's some little bits in more in there. So just carry on kneading until all the flour has been incorporated into the dough. Once you've incorporated all the flour into the dough you want to just put some flour on the on the base of the bowl put the dough on top the flour will basically stop the dough from sticking to the bowl and then you want to cover the top of the bowl with uh, cling film or whatever um, I know I have a lot of subscribers and viewers from the states I don't know what you call this stuff in America food wrap is it I'm not sure but it's you know you know what it is. I don't know what it's called, but of course you'll know what it is. And then what you want to do with that, once it's covered, make sure it's completely covered over. You don't want any air getting in and starting to dry out the dough. Um, you will notice quite quickly that the top of the cling film starts to condensate, which is a good sign. It means that the dough, the water that you put in the dough is warm, so it's going to help the yeast to expand. And then what you want to do is simply leave this bowl in a slightly warmer place than room temperature for about one hour and you should find that the dough will at least double in size okay so an hour has passed and as you can see the dough has expanded massively it's more than twice the size of it was originally now the next step is very very important um, if you want to make a loaf that has that lovely crispy crunchy crust this you absolutely have to do this what you want to do is you want to get a oven proof pot or baking tray or pan or anything that will hold some water okay so put that in the very very bottom of your oven and then you want to put your oven on to about 220 degrees so that's on and you want to warm your oven for about eight to ten minutes but putting a pot or a baking tray or whatever container that's oven proof into the bottom of the oven is incredibly important if you want the crust and in a moment I'll show you exactly why that is so my oven with the uh, pan in the bottom is on and warming up the next thing you want to do is you want to liberally sprinkle your baking tray or your, your loaf tin with some flour so that the um, moist dough doesn't stick. Obviously, you know, I'm using this tray because I like to make a loaf that's this size. It's kind of long. 
Um, obviously, when it's in the oven, it's gonna it's gonna rise a great deal. You can use whichever baking tray you want, make whichever shape you want. You can make a dead square loaf in a proper loaf tin to make your loaf look a little bit more authentic or rustic if you like what you want to do is you want to score with a very sharp knife so be careful you want to score four score marks across the top of your loaf not too deep you don't want to make it deep because that will when you come to cut the bread if you've made the score marks too deep it will sort of the bread will fall apart a little and then to make it really sort of authentically rustic looking you want to get some flour, I just put some of the white flour and just sprinkle it on top of the loaf, on top of the dough. Now my oven's got about another six minutes to warm up so I'm just going to cover this back over with the cling film and of course I can't do it with one hand. But anyway you want to cover your dough with the cling film while the oven warms up and I'll show you the next step in a moment. So the buzzer of my oven has just gone off, it's warmed up. Off comes the cling film from the loaf. As you can see, the loaf has continued to expand because of the warmth inside. Now, I hope you can hear me properly because my oven is quite noisy. Now I'm gonna show you the importance of the pan. If you want that professional baker um, crust on the top, what you then need to do is you wanna take one cup of water, this is a measured cup, and you need to be very, very careful I should have an oven glove on, I know, but um, you know, I'm just going <laughs> to do this to show you. You want to pour the water, one cup of water, into the pan or tray, whatever you've got in the bottom of your oven. Close the door. Now what we'll do, what will happen rather, is the heat inside the oven will cause the water to evaporate and cause a little steam. That steam is what will give you that incredible oven, you know, bakery style professional crust. And when you take the bread out when it's finished, um, you'll be amazed just how crusty the top of the bread is. So I know I've said this before, but I'll say it just one more time. If you want that crust, putting that pan or tray in the bottom of the oven with one cup of water after it's warmed up is so important. Right, so, in goes the bread, and what I'm going to do is, because I'm getting used to this oven, I'm going to set the timer for 12 minutes, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to cook it on that side for 12 minutes, and then I'm going to take it out and turn the, um, turn the tray 360 degrees so that the side of the loaf that's currently at the front by the door is then facing the back and that will cook the bread all the way through. Now obviously um, different ovens have different you know they heat up more quickly more slowly they heat differently so you might want to play around with the time when you do this for the first time. And there's the loaf straight out of the oven looks really good nice and crispy you can see I hope you can hear that. It's just really crispy and beautiful and the flour looks great. Looks like a really good bakery, you know, authentic bakery loaf. Now, for you to test to see if it's absolutely done, it's a very simple way. You take a knife, very sharp knife, or even better, I don't have it at the moment, but a meat skewer. What you want to do is you want to choose the fattest part of the loaf, which is about here, and you want to push the knife Oh, lovely, crispy, all the way through. Hold it for a couple of seconds, then pull it out. Now, I'm not sure you can see that very well. Let me try and, um, no, it's not a great, I apologise, but you can't see it very well. But there is a kind of slightly damp, actually, no, that's quite dry. So that's, um, the tiny, tiny little pieces of dough on there, but it's quite dry, so that's fine. So that basically means my loaf is cooked. If when you pull your knife out of the loaf, um, your knife has got lots of, if your knife is very wet and it's sticky and you can see bits of larger bits of dough on it, and obviously the bread hasn't 
cooked all the way through so you might want to put it in for another couple of minutes but um, I did that on uh, on each side, turned it 360 degrees on the same time and that's come out pretty well. So um, it's finished, it's baked. And there you go, there's the loaf. What I'm going to do for you is I'm going to cut the bread um, and you'll see how crispy it is and just why you put that pan or tray in the bottom of the oven with a cup of water. So let's see how it cuts. Let's. I hope that uh, my rather puny microphone in my camera can pick up the sound so you can see how crusty it is. Sounded pretty good, folks. Let's just let's just open this out, and I hope you can see this. But the reason you put that tray in the top is because all around the top edge, the water in the tray, that cup of water that evaporates and creates steam, creates this kind of crust. It's probably about five millimeters thick. It's Beautiful, absolutely amazing, crusty, crispy bread. The crust goes all around the edge, as you can probably see. And um, that's just incredible bread. Sometimes I'd pull it out of the oven and just break bits off and eat it hot straight away, but I love to let it cool down. Cut it in half, let it cool down. You can freeze it perfectly fine, it will keep. There's no oil, no salt, no fat. Um, and another thing, if you toast this bread once it's cooled down, the toasting process actually somehow improves the flavour. It is the most incredible bread, most tastiest bread I've ever had toasted. So there you go folks, there's my um, bread recipe and method. I hope you've been able to follow it okay. Thank you for watching, please subscribe and follow me on Instagram, comments, do all the usual things and I'll see you all very very soon. Thank